Hi and welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson we're going to be finding a formula for the surface area of a curve that's been revolved about the x-axis. We're going to start by using a frustum. And the surface area of a frustum can be found by using the formula 2 pi r l, where l is a slant height of the frustum and r is the average of the two radiuses at the ends of the frustum. If you need a proof on how to find the surface area of the frustrum formula, there is one I have saved on YouTube. Just type in demystifying math in your search box and all of the videos that I've done will come up. A surface of revolution area can be found by breaking up the solid into numerous frustrums. To get the area of the surface of revolution, we will add up the sum of all of the surface areas of the numerous frustrums. To get the surface area of the frustrum, we need the slant height and we need the average radius. We can find the slant height of the frustrum in terms of x and y just by using the Pythagorean theorem. So our change in x squared plus our change in y squared is going to give us the change in the slant height or the length of each individual frustrum's slant height. As the number of the frustrums increase, the slant height becomes very close to the arc length of the curve, and the change in x is going to approach zero. Also, as the number of frustrums increase, the lengths of the two radii approach the average radius length. The average radius length can be found by using the y-coordinate at that particular point, or in other words, evaluating the function at whatever value we're looking at. In this case, we'll call it c. So f at c becomes the average radius. Okay, so starting with our basic formula for the surface area of Frustrum, 2 pi r l, we can find the surface area of the surface of revolution. So we're going to look for the change in the surface area. So we have 2 pi r times delta l gives us delta s. We know that delta l can be found by using the Pythagorean theorem. And we know that the average radius is going to be approximately equal to the function evaluated at that point, c. Substituting into our formula 2 pi r l, we have 2 pi r is going to be replaced with f at c, and l, using our Pythagorean theorem, delta x squared plus delta y squared. Okay, so now let's simplify this formula a little bit. I'm going to multiply the delta y squared by delta x squared over itself, so we're multiplying by 1. And we're going to rearrange some of the terms. So we're factoring out a delta x squared. So we end up with underneath the radical 1 plus delta y over delta x times delta x all squared. Since we have a delta x all squared, we can take it out from under the radical. And we end up with a formula like this. Where we have 2 pi times a function evaluated at c times the square root of 1 plus delta y over delta x all squared times delta x. Now we need to sum up all the surface areas of the frustrums and take the limit as n goes to infinity. Since the slope is equal to delta y over delta x, we can replace that with f prime at c. The derivative is the slope. And it's going to be squared because delta y and delta x were both squared. Now we have the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of j equals 1 to n of 2 pi times f, c, f at c times the square root of 1 plus f prime at c squared times delta x. Next we're going to rewrite this as an integral to get a formula for the surface of revolution revolved about the x-axis. So we have 2 pi times the integral from your two endpoints of the function evaluated at x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x all squared dx. What you should notice as we've gone through this is part of this formula is really the arc length formula. 
With the arc length formula, we had the square root of 1 plus f prime at x all squared. So we're really just doing that, multiplying it by 2 pi times the radius length, which is f of x. Okay, so let's put this formula to use and find the surface area generated by revolving the curve of x to the 3 halves about the x-axis. So we first need to find the uh, first derivative of x to the 3 halves. So that's going to give us 3 halves x to the 1 half. Then we need to square that, so we have 9 fourths x. Plugging into the formula, we have 2 pi. We're going to integrate from 1 to 4, looking for the surface area between 1 and 4 x to the 3 halves times the square root of 1 plus 9 fourths x dx. Now, for, a for this particular um, integration, we need to use an integration tool. You can use your graphing calculator, you can use Mathematica, or you can do use Mabel. Any of those will help you to integrate this problem. So we get approximately 212 or 213 for the surface area for this particular figure. In part two of this lesson, we will be doing more um, examples and revolving about the y-axis. Thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.